All right. Uh, we are continuing our discussion on the different layers in the Android architecture. So we just looked at the Linux kernel. Now we are going to look at the um, HAL, the hardware abstraction layer. As you can imagine from the name, it's basically a layer um, of abstraction over, uh, over the underlying hardware. So this layer exposes the divide hardware, device hardware capabilities to the higher level API frameworks. Um, so your app doesn't have to directly deal with any lower level hardware. Um, there are different libraries that are present in this particular layer. So for example, the one for audio, one for dealing with the camera and Bluetooth um, and uh, other sensors um, like you know, gyrometer, etc. Okay, so um, what happens is the the libraries written in this this particular layer um, you know, are eventually exposed all the way at the top over here in the Android framework, um, and uh, then our apps, which are at the very top, uh, the user developed apps user as in the developer, uh, developer's apps, um, they can call those appropriate APIs and deal with the hardware underneath. So, um, and given the restrictions on the memory um, in a mobile device, uh, what happens is when a call is made to access the device hardware, um, only then are these library modules loaded. Um, so only when you want to use a camera, uh, will the device load the camera uh, library for you? Um, uh, and that's how it manages the memory as well. Okay. That's all about this layer. The next one is Android Runtime, um, also called ART. Uh, we'll do a slightly deeper discussion on this one. Um, it's, it's pretty interesting to, to note the changes that Android has made and you know, how they're working on optimization of uh, uh, installing and running the apps. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> Before Android 5.0, uh, the runtime was exclusively Dalvik. Um, you might have heard this term Dalvik, uh, which is a specialized um, uh, virtual machine um, based on the underlying Java, basically. Um, and, uh, now, uh, Android 5 onwards, they have developed this Android runtime called ART, um, and it, it's available in parallel with Dalvik. Um, so, you know, the, the older uh, devices can still run um, the, uh, the Dalvik uh, runtime, and we'll see how Android deals with, sorry, how it deals with, uh, you know, choosing which, which particular um, uh, VM uh, or the runtime. Okay. Um, so the ART apps can be optimized for Dalvik, uh, but uh, the other way is not necessarily true. Um, so the optimizations can be for uh, limited resources and power. Um, they they can be uh, the the I mean the changes in ART are uh, they they can run faster even for some weaker CPUs and they can run better on systems with lower memory and they are energy efficient. So these are certain advantages of um, ART over Dalvik. Um, each app um, runs on its own instance of the runtime. You know, this is actually true for Dalvik as well. Uh, its own instance of Dalvik or ART runtime in its own process um, and Again, you know, as we were discussing in the previous video, that enables a, a security measure with respect to other processes uh, which uh, which are running other apps. So uh, you are not going to run the same process, and there will be other sophisticated ways of exchanging data. Um, it can also contain um, core libraries. It contains core libraries for data storage, graphic rendering, rendering, and such things. Um, and one key point to note is, you know, perhaps like almost everything else um, in in Android, it's a modification of uh, the existing virtual machines. It's not the same as uh, standard Java. So um, the Java language that is supported in Android 
it also has certain differences. Uh, for example, um, the graphic libraries like AWT and Spring are not implemented in the Java that is run on Android machines, um, Android devices, right? And um, uh, this, this virtual machine um, also has another difference. It is a richer register uh, machine. So it has more registers, which helps um, making the size of the program smaller um, instead of doing a lot of stack-based uh, transactions um, or instructions. It uses a lot of um, uh, registers uh, on the device. So these are some differences with respect to the standard Java and JVM. Okay. Next, we'll look at what happens when an app is packaged and installed and how the Dalvik versus um, ART uh, difference is uh, handled. So this image is also sourced from Wiki um, and you can find variations of this um, image uh, at, uh, on different websites online. So let's start looking at the top. Um, you know, resources and native code is something that uh, you know, you're getting um, from the framework. And then this, this square here called source will be the developer source code. That combined with a lot of other things, um, um, it gets compiled, compiled into what is called a DEX file. Um, DEX stands for Dalvik Executable. So something that can be executed on the Dalvik machine, a Dalvik virtual machine that is. It's combined with uh, other resources and native code uh, zipped together and that creates an APK, um, Android packaging kit. Um, and you know, all the files that you install, uh, install are basically APKs. So um, at, in the debugging stage, for example, you can, uh, your IDE Android Studio can produce an APK, which you can stick in a USB and pass it to your friend um, who trusts you. And that friend can install your, um, your app without going to App Store, for example. Okay? So as long as you can pass on APKs uh, for, for the device, you should be good, theoretically. Of course, um, you know, that's not how you would uh, uh, develop apps for the real world. No one will you know, like to plug in your USB into their uh, device and uh, push the app on their uh, mobile phone. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's uh, an unnecessary tangent, to, um, in a sense. Um, below this red line, we have the installation zone. Okay, so what happens when an APK goes on the mobile device? Um, the DEX file and the resources are actually separated out of it. Um, why? Because uh, the the DEX file is executable on the Dalvik, and when you are running it or executing it on the Dalvik virtual machine, uh, that's when you are going to need the native code or any other resources. So you separate them out, you put them on the virtual machine, and then you, you run with them. Um, okay, that is the idea. All right. Um, yeah. So what, what happens after that? Um, the dashed square or rectangle here on the left um, gives us a picture of the Dalvik machine. And uh, the, similarly, the dashed rectangle um, on the right gives us an ART machine, okay? So um, the DEX files can then be uh, translated into two different formats based on the underlying machine. So for a Dalvik machine, it's translated into what's called an ODEX file. Um, and this process is called ODEXing. Um, there is a tool on, on our, all our Android devices called Dex opt, which does this part. Similarly, um, in the mirror image, um, you have the Dex to OAT, which translates the Dex file to an ELF file. Um, OAT stands for. Um, we'll come to that in a second, okay? Because um, let me first talk about JIT. So um, the ODEX file is then given to the Dalvik machine, which does a just-in-time compilation. That is, every time you run the, run the app, it's translating the Dalvik file um, to the native code. And as you can see, the arrow from resources and native code comes and joins here. Also, the, the blue, dark blue box of libraries has an arrow coming into this virtual machine, and that also comes and joins here. 
So this is a you know, very standard uh, Java-like execution. Um, and you, you translate the dialogic code into the native code uh, every time using the just-in-time compilation. Okay. So that's how the dialogic machine runs. Um, it has its own advantages and disadvantages. The primary one being, uh, as you can imagine, every time you run it, you are translating it um, using the JIT compiler. So um, that makes it slow. You know, not grandly slow for most apps perhaps, um, but uh, significantly slow for our impatient user, uh, which is you, know, you and me, all of us um, at this point. So um, they have come up with a new technique, a new runtime um, art, ART, in which um, the ELF file goes to the art uh, runtime and um, it does an ahead of time. Okay, so um, OAT here stands for ahead of time um, compilation. It should be AOT. Uh, I think there is a mistake in the picture. So AOT is ahead of time and the ahead of time translation translates the code one time um, to uh, the to the native like uh, library. So what this does is does for us is it gives us a faster execution, um, but contrasts that with a bigger space for for the for the APK uh, or rather the installed file. So what that means is um, the installation space for your uh, apps is bigger compared to the Dalvik versions but they will be faster because they're not going to do um, JIT compilation every time you run the app. Okay? So that is the main advantage of ART. That is the main difference here. Um, and um, older devices allowed you to choose between which one. Um, I think the newer devices uh, by default support ART. Okay, All right. 